The Grey Hair Garrison is quickly becoming one of my favorite units to use. Not only are they capable defenders, but their charge ability makes them more than just another shield wall. In terms of usage, they are like shield maidens, so they might be complicated to learn, use and apply, but they have great potential if you use them correctly. The Grey Hair Garrison or Veterans as I like to call them are a very unique unit. Not only do they have multiple weapons with different on hit effects, but when they are below 40% of their maximum hit points, they not only deal drastically more damage, but also heal by 10% health every hit. This makes them very dangerous, especially so while on their last legs. On top of all those offensive skills, they are also kitted out with multiple crowd control immunities that make them one of the best defenders in the game. So are they any good? I like to compare units in PvE situations to judge their capabilities compared to other units, so we have a point of reference. They are not that good with expeditions due to their small frontal coverage in their 3 line formation, but with the help from allies who cover your flanks, they will return good results. The same can be said about their ability in sieges and general gameplay. They are very good in the front, but once flanked, they lose their ability to focus their damage and their ability to block incoming damage. In rebel camps, they outshine most other units, in fact so much so that they can single handedly finish them if you are careful about enemy musket units. Unlike stalwarts, which lose to an enemy of halberdiers, the veterans can handle them with ease, utilizing their long reach and healing ability at low health. But then again, if they are surrounded, they still will slowly lose. So from my experience in PvE matches, I feel like the veterans resemble a combination of berserkers and shield maidens, bringing berserker levels of crowd control recovery and healing, both the shield maidens complexity and non-instant shield wall bracing capabilities. Their first skill, stalwart defenses, is a brace skill, but not of the normal stalwart kind. The veterans using this skill will recover from and become immune to crowd control for a brief period before they settle into their three line formation. This brace will use your hero as a reference point and create a wall with their backs aimed towards you. So remember to position yourself accordingly to utilize this skill. The best part of the skill other than the immunity to crowd control is its low cooldown of 5 seconds, meaning you can use it very often to reposition after massive AoE stuns without needing to press F1. Do know that pressing the skill twice while in the 3 line position will make your units form a bit in front, and if the skill positions your units into the enemy brace, or objects and walls, they will get stuck and become unable to use the last stand skill or even attack. Generally, you want to use the skill as a reaction to something, like right after you charge, or after an AoE stun to recover from it. Their second skill, Last Stand, increases their damage by 15%, and reduces damage taken by what I assume is another 15%. This skill can only be used when your units enter the 3 line formation. This is a strong skill, but also quite limiting due to its formation restrictions but you can activate it and break formation at the cost of some of the buff effects. The good thing is that it lasts for 14 seconds, so you can be able to use it before you enter combat, but you will want to use it after you charge and brace, so you can benefit from the stun immunity and the entire buff duration in battle. Do note, the stun immunity does not last as long as the entire buff, so you'll need to use the stalwart bracing to recover from crowd control during the skill. Their last skill, Charge, is what I consider to be their most important ability. When used in a defensive stance, the entire unit will stop after hitting the first contact. But when you use the wedge formation, they won't deal extra damage, but they will deal the most damage due to their orientation. Unlike most chargers, the veterans have different effects on hitting the enemy. The spears debuff, the shield block breaks, while the longsword deals the most damage with their multi-attack. So a charge in the wedge formation will make the most effective results compared to the 3 line formation. But why do I believe this is their most important skill? Because it gives them the mobility and a fast close gap measure that other shield walls don't have. And it is also a skill that has a fast wind up animation and a near instant damage if the enemy is right in front of them. What does this mean? This means they can instantly delete a hero right in front if they dare stand next to them. The skill can also be used in mid battle to push back the enemy and help you reorientate your units for a retreat, making it a very flexible skill on a moderate 30 second cooldown. A trick you can use to maximize your damage in 3 line formation is to tap into the wedge formation and then use the charge skill as quickly as possible. This way you deal more damage and have an easier time getting back into the 3 line formation on the front line. Also to keep in mind is that there 
stun immunity doesn't last an entire charge, but only for a brief period of about 1 second. So if you're charging for the Brachial Pikes and Pike Militia with the ability to stun, you'll need to close the distance and charge as close as possible. In fact, the 1 second stun immunity applies to all their skills excluding Last Stand, which might be longer. When any skill is used, they will suddenly get up and remain immune to crowd control for a brief period of time, so the immunity should be used as a reaction to someone knocking them down, or to remain firm when they can contest against for example Short Sword Body Slam Ultimate, which has a slow and obvious animation. All the skills are packed full of features, but when they come together, do they start to show their true potential? This is the combo I like to use the most. Start in the 3 line formation, you then want to switch to the wedge formation, and then charge before the formation move finishes. So you gain the benefits of the wedge formation while in the 3 line formation, dealing max amount of damage to the enemy. You then want to use the stalwart brace so your unit forms right at the edge of the front line. Alternatively, start out using the wedge formation to enjoy a better charge, but at a cost of a longer stalwart brace formation time, where in between movement your units cannot attack. And you should also be aware that they can get themselves stuck due to charging into the enemy lines and failing to form up into the 3 line formation by getting stuck in enemy stalwart or palace guard braces. After the stalwart brace, you can use the last stand skill or delay until the enemy tries to push your position. Alternatively, you can start with the last stand skill to further heighten their charge damage. Let me also add in a few more tips. When you're fighting a hero, you can tap stalwart brace to block their stun, then use X and V to press the offensive while you have immunity to the stun. You should try to use the stall up brace as few times as possible to be ready for a big AoE stun. Although the cooldown is very short, using it early before the short sword ultimate will leave you unable to retaliate. For the skill tree, both trees are viable. Me being a longsword main, I use the top tree with the 6 extra last stand cooldown reduction, an extra block break which heavily influences their fighting capabilities. The top tree provides more firepower in battle and gives them more usage of last stand, providing potential usage as a flanking unit. For every other hero other than a longsword, the bottom tree might be the better option, giving them more time below 40% health where they can have on their hit 10% heal and 25% boosted damage. While while also giving them more health and more damage on the charge. Again, both trees are viable and it really depends on your playstyle. And as far as I know, there are more bottom tree users in the first week of usage. The ideal doctrine setup would be either one of these. The left side focuses on more damage while the right focuses on more defense. If you believe that the best defense is a good offense, more attack could be more beneficial, especially when the attack doctrines increase damage by more than 6%. But if you wanted to go for defense, the 600 health roughly adds 5% more survivability, while adding 50 armor to each gain about the same effects. So the best defensive setup would include both the 600 unit specific health doctrine and the Season 7 Valkyrie's Blessing for 50 armor on all armor types. So how good are the Grey Hair Garrison in the game compared to other units? While they excel in dishing out damage, under stress, and are great at guarding the front lines, they struggle to project their damage further than where their charge leads them. This is unlike Stalwarts, who can brace every few seconds and move forward slowly while doing damage. Although this can be remedied by using X and V like Paladins, they cannot push deep into the enemy front lines using their charge. They have relatively low raw damage output while on the move, and they cannot deal a fatal blow to enemy formations like Paladins and Berserkers. Without the ability to have blocking doctrines or doctrines of any class, they do not excel at any given role, and when they lose their shield type units, they will certainly take much more damage and losses in battle. Also, their 14 second timer on the last stand is their greatest strength and their greatest weakness, as they will become fragile if the battle drags on losing the ability to deal damage and withstand enemy pressure. In other words, when they are on the front lines, on their last stand, and on their last breaths, they are one of the strongest melee units in the game and with great damage, decent block, and near perfect resistance to crowd control. But keep in mind their greatest weakness, which all other melee infantry have in common, cavalry and an overwhelming force of units or heroes. But they are also specifically afraid of javelins, which pierce through the first row of shields and kill units on the back near instantaneously, so be on the lookout for them. But more than even javelins, they are afraid of palace guards. We even under perfect skill usage, the garrisons will result in an even or outright quick loss. The garrison in my opinion is a balanced unit with multiple strengths, but also weaknesses. They need a skilled, perceptive commander to utilize their skills correctly and draw out their potential. But more than anything, they are really fun to play with especially when you outplay your opponent with their stunning recovery and damage at low health. 
so you should definitely aim to get them as there are only 225 leadership in season and 240 off season. A very good unit for their cost and cheap enough to give you unit flexibility in your warband. At the very least, I'll be using them extensively in the future in rebel camps and siege games. If you want to discuss how to use units and share tips and tricks you have, please join the discord in the description, which recently had Benjito, another Conquest Blade analytical YouTuber, come to co-own and give insight into unit skill tree details and bugs. I'm aiming to use the discord community to gather information about Conquest Blade and maybe send feedback to the devs through the content creator program when I join. This was Alan, like and subscribe if you want to see more, and see you in the next video, and stay curious.